My name is Liam Duran. I'm a Sigma Pro photographer. I live in Breckenridge, Colorado, which I don't know if anyone's familiar with that area, but is a really good place to be an outdoor photographer. I shoot for brands like Oakley, K2, ski brands, outdoor brands. I shoot for tourism boards, and I still I do a lot of editorial work. I do a lot of magazine work, which might sound weird in this day and age. There's actually still magazine work going on, but there's quite a bit. In fact, it's a, it's a core part of my business. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go from 12 to 600 millimeters. I'm going to show you all the different lenses that are in my pack every day and how I use them, from ultra-wide angle to super telephoto and everything in between. One of these super wide angle lenses is in my pack every day. Uh, nowadays, it tends to be the 14 24 28. So I use this lens as a, as a scene setting lens, as a storytelling lens. When you use a wide angle lens like that, it locks the viewer into time and place. I generally shoot this locked off, and by that I mean I use one shot focus. So I'm picking the point in the, uh, where I want my focus to be, recomposing my frame, and then directing my athletes to come through the frame exactly where I want them to be. Here I'm using a super wide angle. This is the 14 24 28. Going wide angle, I'm showing the entire scene. I'm looking right into the sun, but you'll notice there's not much flare at all. It's really controlling the flare very well there. Another thing you'll notice here is that he's not silhouetted. And I get this question a lot. If he has the sun behind him, how come he's not totally black and completely silhouetted? There's a giant reflector right here. That giant white, all that white snow just bounces light back up into his face. So you get that a giant reflector right there. Okay, here I am again. I'm using this super wide angle lens. I'm telling a story. This was an assignment I did for a magazine about a highway. And if you look in the background, it might be a little bit hard to see on the screen, but you can see the highway right here. The other thing that's interesting going on here is I'm not standing still like this. I've actually climbed up high onto about a five foot rock that's in the middle of the slope. So I'm able to get that view kind of looking down on top of him and down the slope all the way to, to the road below. I knew that at some point I had to combine the action with the place. And so this is how I did it. Okay, this is an interesting shot. Uh, this is shot from 20 feet up in a tree. Looks like a simple image, but really this was very hard to get. This green on the flo forest floor only happens for about two weeks a year. So a very limited time frame to get this image. Another thing going on here is color. Do you think it's any accident he's wearing red here? Absolutely no accident at all. The athlete asked me, what should I be wearing? And I said, I don't care what you wear. I want you to be a little bit blurred in this shot anyway. I'm going to do a slow shutter speed. Just wear red. He didn't get it at the time. OK, whatever. But once he saw the shot, he was like, oh, now I get it. And another thing I like to do with the super wides is I do a lot of near focus, far action. So I put a big element in the frame here and then let my skier, athlete, biker, whatever it may be, kind of drift off to the background. One of the really cool things about using a super wide angle, here I'm using the 1224, is you can really exaggerate height and depth and you exaggerate your perspective. He looks like he's a pretty good bit in the air. He's, you know, looks like 10, 15 feet in the air. He's going to land way down here. He's actually really close to me. Okay, the next two lenses that are always in my pack every day, or I don't carry both of these, obviously, but one of these, the 24105 F4 Art or the 24728 Art. These are great for action, landscape, and portraits. Um, these I'm going to use as a, in locked off mode, but I'm also going to use them in AI servo mode. So what that means is they have to be really fast and be able to track movement, track athletes as they move through the scene. Recently, I've been doing the 2470 almost exclusively. We don't just shoot the skiing. I shoot the town. I shoot the landscapes. I, sh I shoot everything. I shoot an, uh, an entire story. So this is the lens that I'll put on my camera to go walk around town and go get all those different kind of shots. OK, here we are again. We're in Canada. This is a shoot that we did for K2 and Oakley. And we're way in the back country. And this is pretty dangerous. This young woman here is obviously a professional skier. She knows what she's doing. But this is also really dangerous. This snow is bottomless. If you crash, if something happens and you were to go head first, you will not get out. So we have safety people standing over here and standing over here just to make sure everything's going to be OK. I converted this to black and white because it was snowing so much and so cloudy the whole time that there was a lot of blue hue. So I went to black and white, and I think it came out great. 2470 is an awesome, awesome landscape lens. It's kind of like the ultimate landscape and national park lens. There's 15 people right here. But I just zoomed in a little bit. I get rid of them. They're gone. 
I do a lot of backcountry excursions. A lot of them are solo. I just go out by myself for a couple days. And that's a really good lens uh, if I just want to bring one lens. There's an assignment we did for Crested Butte Tourism Board and Bike Magazine. Getting people to ski for the camera is really hard. It could take years for someone to ski really well in front of the camera. Biking in front of the camera is really easy. And I tell that to people all the time, and they think I'm kidding. They're like, what do I do? I'm like, stand and pedal. And what that does, it puts you into a nice dynamic position that he's got right there. He's not a pro mountain biker. He's just a regular guy, but it gives you that nice look. Okay, the last category here, we're into the telephoto lenses. My workhorse lens, the one I say every outdoor photographer should have is a 7200-2.8. I also use my 100-400C quite a bit. The 12300 is maybe the sharpest zoom I own, but I don't get to use it that often. And then the 15600, great for, that's more wildlife, um, but I use that for landscape as well. So this is a classic 7200 shot. Skiers coming right at you, blue sky in the background. He's going at a high rate of speed, and I'm just servo tracking the athlete as he's moving at me. Minimum shutter speed I would go is about a thousandth, and I'd rather be at 1250, 1600, or two thousandth. 7200 is also an awesome landscape lens. I don't know how many people use it for landscape, but it is a great landscape lens. The 100-400C is an awesome lens uh, for, for wildlife. This was almost at the top of a 14,000 foot peak, and I don't think you'd want to really carry a 500 F4 to the top of a 14,000 foot peak, but the 100-400 is perfect for that. So this is the, a Sigma 100-400 again. Um, this is a luck favors the prepared kind of a shot. Earlier in the day, I'd been shooting Canyonlands, and it was snowing, it was hailing, sleeting, rainy, windy, kind of a nasty day, but kind of cool day to be shooting in the desert, honestly. You don't get to see that kind of weather very often. So I set up my camp in a place that if the weather did clear, I would be in position to get a great shot. So sure enough, I'm hanging out, finish my dinner, it gets a little bit brighter. Oh, I think it's going to happen. Grab my camera, grab my tripod, run to the top of this tiny little hill, and boom, we're greeted by one of the most magnificent sunsets I've ever seen. And I get this whole shot all together stitched right there. So very versatile lens. This sunset was so cool that the next morning in the coffee shop I went into town, everyone in the coffee shop was talking about it. Like, Did you see that last night? Did you see the sunset? Oh, I saw it. 100-400, handheld, just showing some detail. Again, we're back in the Tetons. This is Mount Moran and the Moran Glacier. And we were getting that spotlighting look again. And it was just this warm, gorgeous, beautiful light streaking across the plains and hitting the mountains. I grabbed the 100-400. I shot it handheld. I'm using good technique too, mind you. Elbows right here. Hand underneath the lens this way. Don't hold it this way because that's just a pivot point. Hold it right here. Press it against your face. Handheld. Click. Good to go. There's my grizzly bear. That's on the 12300 2.8 Sport with a 7D Mark II. I had packed up my gear. I was going on to Bozeman. I was done shooting. And I kid you not, the, the, the thank you for coming to Grand Teton National Park sign is right here. I was like, are you kidding me? It's like they set him out there just so you could catch the grizzly bear on your way out the door. He's hanging out there, and for an hour and a half, two hours, his head is just down. All he's doing is just eating, 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 doing what bears do. Three times in an hour and a half did he pick up his head where you can get this shot. This is our last shot of, uh, of the presentation here. This was a cover commission that I got from a magazine. Liam, we need a photo that says mountain and we need it today. What can you do? And every time I hiked down this trail, I saw this flat spot right underneath these two 14,000 foot peaks here. So every time I walked by, I would say, there's a photo here. Someday there's gonna be a photo here. I know it, it just lines up great. So I put that in my mental Rolodex of photos. So sure enough, I get the call. We go out there, I get my buddy to be a model for me. Uh, we get the shot, as you can see. This is how it came out. They put all the words up here, mountain down here. They got the whole thing laid out. It came out uh, as an awesome cover. Okay, so that's what I have for you guys. I've taken you from 12 millimeters all the way to 600 millimeters. I've showed you how I use the lenses and how we get all these shots. Um, being an outdoor photographer is really amazing. It's super fun at times. It can also be wildly frustrating when that one cloud won't move. Uh, so I suggest you guys give it a try sometime. Get out there. Thank you so much.